Luxury SUVs, an increasing number of car buyers are starting to go off luxury saloons and other sports cars in favour of the luxury SUV. Drawn in by the appeal of these elevated driving positions and rugged looks, especially with their very nice and upmarket interiors, why is the luxury SUV so popular? But mostly, what are the best luxury SUVs you can buy according to all the reviewers and all the average scores and put them in one video? Mind you, luxury SUVs aren't cheap and you'll need quite a bit of cash if you want to buy some of these on the list. The Rolls-Royce Cullinan is a car that at first I really wasn't sure about but it's genuinely grown on me over the last few years and after its release in 2018 it seems to have grown on quite a lot of people as well. The Cullinan sits between the Ghost and the Phantom in Rolls-Royce's lineup and it's his first SUV. The Cullinan however is extremely expensive. Prices for the Cullinan often range from 250 to 300,000 pounds but still, I really want one. Yes, you could probably buy a property for that. For the cost of what it is, you do get a lot in the Cullinan. It has leather interior, wood and solid metal finishes. It has a mighty V12 weighing 2.6 tonnes and can reach 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds. The pros of the Cullinan is that it's effortless. It's got amazing interior, possibly the best in the whole of the luxury SUV range and superb refinement. Unfortunately, the Cullinan lacks in other areas such as low speeds and also a hugely expensive car to buy run. It's also got fairly controversial styling. A lot of people don't like it. The Rolls-Royce Cullinan is definitely one of the most expensive cars on this list, but it's definitely still very cool. It's becoming a bit more frequent and the price is dropping quite a lot. It's definitely one to consider if you were super, super wealthy. It's definitely got the status symbol a lot of people want. You can't do a luxury SUV list without putting the Mercedes G-Class on there, or known as the G-Wagon. The G-Wagon is, quite frankly, one of the ultimate luxury SUVs when you think of a big car and an SUV to buy when you've got a lot of money. Well, the G-Wagon is definitely expensive and has a lot of comfort levels to it. It's comprised of a somewhat off-road ability that might be quite unexpected for a lot of people. It's actually way softer than its predecessor and it's very, very strong and reliable. G-Wagons are well known for going pretty much anywhere and never break. This essentially looks and feels like a military piece of hardware, which is a good value for the G-Wagon to buy. Even though it does have a bit of a status symbol, it's definitely a car that people do find about royalty now that just looks so great. It's got the immense off-road ability as a pro, unmistakable styling, indestructible quality. Nowadays, it is rather ostentatious and the price, well, it's almost getting on for close to the Rolls Royce and Lamborghini prices now. The G-Wagon is by far the fan favourite of this list. Yes, it comes in at around 100 to 200,000 pounds, but they are depreciating quite a bit. They're also really popular anywhere in the world and it's a very accessible car. You know you can use a G-Wagon for off-roading and I think that's probably my main reason to buy one. I initially wasn't going to include the BMW X7 on this list, but after finding it on Whatcar and Parkers, I could not put this car on the list. The BMW X7 is rated as number one or two up on both of the comparison sites and the only thing bigger than the X7's gigantic front grille is the car itself. It is absolutely huge. If you've got a big budget and a big family, it should definitely be on your shortlist. It's a very luxurious car and something different from BMW because we don't have BMW often in a super, super luxury SUV list. But now they seem to create something that definitely is up there. The way it drives is very surprising and it's also crazy for a big car that it handles so well as well. You can drive it pretty much like an M3 if you wanted to. The favourite engine in this car is often the 3 litre straight 6 diesel which provides strong performance and a very good fuel economy. Pros of the X7 is that it's super quiet, comfortable, spacious, and it got a good infotainment system, which is not like we know with old BMWs. Wow. Cons are that it does feel extremely huge and will look a bit weird in terms of its styling. The X7 is clearly a great family car, no doubt about it, and it definitely has the ranks of the big SUVs now. However, for me, it doesn't look great, but it does have the speed and capability of a BMW. Again, I'd rather have the sports car or saloon. The Bentley Bentayga was a car I hated when it first came out, and it's easy to understand why. It didn't look great. However, Bentley did understand that it was their firm's fastest selling car when it first went on sale. And for that reason, it does have to be in this list. It comes with the same sense of occasion with any other Bentley. The beautiful interior, the infotainment system, the amazing performance and that awesome V8. And it does offer a great engaging drive, I've heard from a lot of reviewers. The problem with the Bentley Gantakia is, much like the Rolls Royce, it's very expensive and I've never really liked it personally. Despite its considerable size, the Bentayga offers great visibility aided by a range of cameras, and for pros, it's a lovely hand-finished car. It has great performance. A lot of the reviewers say the gearbox is laggy, has extremely 
extremely, and I do mean extremely, high running costs. It just seems to fit into the Cheshire or Los Angeles lifestyle a bit more than it should. The Bente gear for me is the ugliest on this list. Yes, it's got luxury and yes, it does have the power. It is a little bit boring and I just think you'd rather buy a Continental for the price. Yes, the car that Ferrari said they would not make is the Ferrari, insert name, because I'm not going to pronounce it in this video. It's a great car that has come on the list, and a bit like the Lamborghini Urus, this car has 715 horsepower, costs £312,000, and is a four-door, four-seater car, or answer to the Rolls-Royce Cullinan and Aston Martin DBX. Yes, the Ferrari won't sell in those numbers like the others, and yes, it's definitely not seen as a capable off-roader compared to the Range Rover, but it's brash, thirsty, and ridiculously expensive that people will actually buy it. Wealthy tycoons will love this thing. It offers a driving experience which rivals probably can't match, to be fair, and with the clarity and speed it comes with in its chassis steering and throttle response, it is indeed a great place to be. Ferrari, insert name settles into a more uncomfortable cruiser, albeit with a slightly firmer ride compared to its rivals. I have to say, I like the Ferrari insert name. It does actually start to grow on me. This is probably the most extreme example of a luxury SUV, and the Ferrari insert name is definitely very, very expensive, and it is relatively new. It's definitely not one that the average family would buy, more the average millionaire to billionaire. It is very capable and it's different for Ferrari's first SUV. And finally, the original Range Rover is often credited as the pioneer of luxury SUV breeds. Third generation Range Rover continues to find itself at the top of the class and probably will be at the top of this list. Having been crowned 2023 large premium SUV of the year, it is an absolute peach. However, everyone knows reliability in Land Rover is not always perfect and if you do happen to own one in london right now the theft is ridiculously high and getting insured is also a problem there's not much to say about the new range rover other than the fact it was going to be a great car anyway this suv feels right at home anywhere from cruising to going off-road in a slippery muddy field whatever the terrain this is a car that is probably going to beat the rest of the cars in this list. The latest Range Rover is also the most advanced yet in terms of its powertrain and the platform it caters for, petrol, diesel or plug-in hybrid now. All of these variants are an option and there's an all-electric version in the works too, which is to be expected. Yes, the Range Rover icon and much-loved car is at the top of this list. It will always be the king. Ultimately, these are probably the most luxury SUVs you can buy on the market at the moment. Interested to know your thoughts and what car you would buy, or would you buy another one?